Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're going to be continuing on with the DIY aquarium controller build. This is the Reefberry Pie project, which I put out a video on a few days ago. And so far the response has been great. I'm really happy to see a lot of people uh, interested in this project and some people you know, saying they were interested in maybe doing something. Um, so what I want to do is just kind of show you uh, some of the stuff that you need to get started. Uh, I'm going to try to keep these first videos a little bit brief, just you know, some little bite-sized chunks uh, to just go over very specific things. And, you know, that way we could just do baby steps and, you know, eventually get up to where I am today. And, you know, hopefully these, this will give you the information uh, that you need to get started on your own great project. So the first thing we're going to need is a Raspberry Pi. So I'm going to show you, um, you know, where I picked mine up at. So there are a lot of different places you could go to get a Raspberry Pi. I just happened to go to Amazon. Uh, they had what I wanted there. And let me show you um, what you'll be looking for. So if you do a search on your Raspberry Pi 3, which is the model that we're using, um, you'll see that you're going to get a lot of different search results. And you, know, you may not exactly know what to get because there's all these different kits here. Um, what you really need is the Raspberry Pi Model B. Um, this is the board itself and it costs around $35. Uh, but this is sort of like you know when you go to buy an aquarium, you know, the glass box itself uh, isn't going to do a whole lot for you. You need a lot of other things like you know your lights, your uh, heater, pump, all that sort of thing. Uh, so that's why they have all these different kits uh, available which have various different uh, items that you can use to um, use with your Raspberry Pi. Uh, there are a few things that are you know, pretty much necessary uh, to run with this. So you're going to need a power cord, uh, at least a uh, SD card, because this does not have any uh, storage with it. You have to add your own SD card. Um, and of course, you'll need like a keyboard, a mouse, and a, uh, a monitor to hook up with it. So let me just show you what I ordered, and this had everything that I needed. So this is the kit that I bought. This is the Lover Pi 3 Media Center Kit, 32 gigabyte model. Um, I actually have two Raspberry Pis right now. Uh, the first one I bought was a little bit different. It was also Lover Pi, and I only got an eight gigabyte card with mine. Um, I think eight gigabyte, it does work, uh, but it's a little bit cramped. Once you have the operating system, uh, start adding some additional, you know, apps and files and everything on there. I was, you know, down to maybe I think one and a half to two gigs free space. Uh, so for my next Raspberry Pi, I ended up buying one with a lot more space on it. So I have 32 gigs on mine now. Um, and what this this one costs sixty dollars, and what you get is the Raspberry Pi board. Um, it comes with a little case, which I'm not using mine, uh, but. It's, that is nice to have, so in case you decide not to use this as an aquarium controller, um, you know, you could use this as a media center or a, a retro pie, uh, you know, game emulator, some old uh, video games and stuff, and you could put it in that little case, it would be fine to do. Um, it comes with the power adapter, uh, an HDMI cable, some heat sinks, and the 32 gigabyte micro SD card with an adapter. So this is the one that I ended up buying, and like I said, it was $60. Um, and this, you know, has everything that you'll need to get started. Uh, something else that I might suggest um, to look for is if you are just getting started with the Raspberry Pi and you've never done any uh, work like this before, uh, I found it very valuable, and this is my first time you know, working on anything like this. Uh, you could buy just one of these um, starter learning lab kits, and this is the one that I bought. It says it's the old version. I guess there's a new one now. Uh, but it was $25.99, and it gives you all sorts of little sensors, buttons, um, just all sorts of things that you could use uh, to hook up to your Raspberry Pi to learn how to do uh, you know, certain things on it. And I found this to be very useful. So I've, I've also got one of those as well. So once you get your Raspberry Pi, uh, let's take a closer look at what you can expect to find in the kit. So. You will get your Raspberry Pi, of course, power supply, 
and this does use the little micro USB so if you have a power supply that uh, meets these specs uh, you could probably already use that I think a lot of cell phone chargers use something like that um, just a standard HDMI cable uh, this is the little case that comes with so um, could be handy if you want to put it inside of a case um, and you will also get your little uh, micro SD card with an adapter there and that's it so inside the Raspberry Pi box is the actual unit itself and you can expect to find a little uh, user manual in here and then Raspberry Pi and typically you will also get these little heat sinks um, that come separately and they gotta be uh, peel them off and stick them on there under those chips Guess help to keep them cool but yeah this is um, this is what we're going to be using to uh, control our aquarium controller uh, this will be the brains of it so you can see we've got four USB ports here there is a uh, Ethernet port there um, it has built-in Wi-Fi and Bluetooth um, this is where the power cord goes in Let me get that to focus there we go um, it's got HDMI it's got audio output um, and then there's a few other ports on here. Um, this one here is actually used for, or is it this one or this one? One of these is used for connecting a camera to it, um, which is kind of cool. And that, but the real uh, awesome part about this Raspberry Pi is right here. This is the 40 pin uh, GPIO. And that's the general purpose input output. And this is basically what we were going to be uh, writing our programs to control is these pins here and they are the things we're going to be hooking our sensors up to they're the things that are going to be uh, controlling uh, relays um, you know anything we're basically going to be doing with this Raspberry Pi uh, in the outside world is going to be going through these pins here and we're going to talk a lot about that later but I just kind of wanted to point that out now so yeah so this is uh this is what we'll be working with and then the comes with the micro SD card and it's already got the operating system and everything installed on it and like I said this is my uh, second Raspberry Pi uh, the first one came with this 8 gigabyte card but the new one I have has a 32 gig card and this just goes you know, into there like that yeah like that and that's it you're ready to go with this um, I will plug this in and power it up and show you uh, you know just how easy it is um, but before we do that this is the starter kit I was talking about before um, so if you do decide to get one you can expect to get a lot of little components in here um, that you could use to learn how to use this or how to do things with this uh, thing but you probably will want to you know go out and get yourself at least some jumper cables um, a breadboard and this uh, basically breakout cable that's going to allow us to connect to the GPIO and we can interface you know, right here and this will help us you know prototype some circuits so we'll be getting into that a lot more later but suffice to say um, that's going to help out a lot so let's get this thing uh, plugged in and show you how easy it is so basically um, you're going to need to plug this into an HDMI and I've got a computer monitor right there well it's actually over there um, and then we're going to plug in a keyboard and a mouse to the USB and then I just need to plug the power cord in and we'll boot this thing up and show you what it looks like so once you get this thing powered up it's going to behave pretty much like any other computer. So I just plugged it in. There it is, booting up. And this is running a version of Linux called Raspbian. And this will boot us into our desktop. So there you have it. So I think this is a good stopping point. 
uh, we'll pick up next time with uh, some configuration that we need to do uh, before we start with our development. And then we'll start to get into the uh, GPIO pins a little bit more, uh, maybe start doing a little bit of basic uh, operations with it and you know, just show you how easy it is to actually uh, work with these things. So I hope you guys uh, find this interesting and you know, hopefully you guys are um, you know, following along and I look forward to uh, you know, going through the rest of this project with you guys. And like always, I want to thank you guys for watching and you know, I'll catch you guys in the next video. Take care.